student was serious or joking. But I thought, if they want to do that, fine. But you don't have to do what he suggested. You can... And really, um, I think ideally you would um, update, insert, and delete from the database. But if you want to start small and just do queries from the database, um, that could be good too. All right. Put together a little bit of documentation. In your documentation, you should explain the purpose of what you're doing it for. And you should talk about the design of what the GUI is going to look like, what the user interface is going to look like. And you should describe any classes that you're going to have and the methods that you have and so on. Ideally, I know it's, it's tough for students sometimes to think through and come up with methods and classes that they're going to be using. But it's a valuable skill to have. It's particularly a valuable skill to have if you're going to ever work on larger projects where you may not be doing all the coding. Or when you get to a certain point, you may actually not do any of the coding. You may design it and hand it off to someone else. That's actually kind of a nice position to be in some of the time. All right? At the very least, you can hand off the grunt work, the boring stuff, and, and focus on maybe the more challenging, interesting parts of the problem. So it's good to be able to think through in advance what you have to do and plan out the methods and the classes that you're going to need and so on. All right. So next week is just a design, correct? Yeah. Next week, next week is just coming up with the idea and the design. That will give um, you know that that's a little should be a little more um, straightforward. And again, gives you a little break from coding. I know the blackjack assignment is a big deal. It's pretty intensive. So um, if you're still catching up and maybe dotting your eyes and crossing the t's, yeah, that's right. I thought I, I would say I hope I said it right. Yeah, dotting the I's and crossing the T's. That'll give you some time to do that uh, too. Thursday, you know, we do not have a lecture. It will be an all lab class. I want to talk about two things today. Um, I'm gonna we're gonna continue to look at the address book, but we're gonna really focus on the things that are important about the address book. Like I'm not gonna worry about the list view so much. I'm going to worry about the database interactivity. I'm going to worry about the threading. All right. Keep in mind the purpose of what's called multi-threading. All right. Your code, your app, your activity runs as a process. And your main GUI is runs as a process, but there may be other things that your app needs to do that are potentially time consuming. And if those are on the same thread, and by thread I mean how the CPU switches between um, threads of programs to run. Let's say you're running your Android phone and you're playing a game and your email is turned on so you could be getting emails in the background and you could be uh, you know streaming music or whatever. These are all processes that the CPU is rotating among. Well your Android app that you create would be a process. Now if your Android app does something that is potentially going to take a long time, that could actually interfere with the ability of the user to interact with the GUI. All right. What are some things that could take a long time, a long time in terms of computer time? Database interactivity, going out and running a database query. That's something that, relatively speaking, could be time intensive. And you don't want it so that while that is going on, your activity can't respond to things such as touching buttons or clicking on the, on the screen or whatever. So therefore, you create a separate thread. All right? Your process sort of gets split into two threads, and any time that process gets is shared between those two threads. All right? That's in a nutshell what multi-threading is. Now, the problem with that 
or not the problem with that, but start off a thread, you don't wait for it to finish. That's the whole notion of a thread, is you start it off and it will notify you when it finishes and then you can go and do some things. So let's see a couple examples of how threading is used in this example to do what they need to do. To do both the database and interactivity and to do the um, preventing, the, preventing uh, the, the GUI from being tied up. Um, the error in Android that you get if, if your application can't handle the GUI is application not responding. Anyone has had an Android for not too long, you probably have seen that error. Such and such application is not responding. All right. And what that means is something is going on with the application where processing is occurring and it's not able to respond to the touch or to other things. So I, there's a certain amount of time that if it goes by and it hasn't responded to it, it will, it will give that error. The solution to that typically is breaking down into threads and that's what we're going to look at here. And the first example, and I hope as we go through this we'll not just go over the threading but we'll also go over the database interactivity as well. The first example where we see this is In the on resume of the activity, so when this activity essentially starts up or resumes, it is calling get contacts task, or it's creating a new get contacts task, and it is calling the execute method on it, and it's passing it an array of objects which are null. Let's look at this one step at a time. Get contact task. Well, if we look down here a bit, get contact cast is a private class. It's an inner class, right? It's defined inside this class's definition. And it extends an asynchronous task. All right? What do we mean by asynchronous? Something that, something that can operate independently, I guess. So it could be happening at the same time, but they proceed on independent. What would be a form of asynchronous communication? Texting or emailing. A face-to-face -face conversation is synchronous, right? In other words, I will say something and stop, you will respond back. That's synchronous. So we're working sort of together. It's synchronized. Asynchronous is a case where I send a text. I'm not going to sit there waiting for you to send a text back. All right? You know, um, I send my daughter a text, for example. Then I go into class. All right, and lecture for a while and all that after class is done. She may be in class. All right, when she gets out of class, she sees a text and responds back. That response might come. I'm not going to look at it, though, until I'm done with class, and then I'll go and look at it, and we go back and forth. So it doesn't have to be synchronized. All right. Um, Neither party is waiting for the other one to finish with asynchronous communication. You, do, you send it and then you go on your merry way. And when you have time, you'll go back and look for the next thing. So this extends an asynchronous task. All right? Now. If we notice, associated with this, overrided, is a couple of methods. We have an attribute of the database connector. We have a do in background method. 
that is going to, this is what's going to happen in parallel, asynchronously, with the main thread which is handling the GUI. So when I hear, go here and I say, New get contacts task. All right, all that's doing is creating an instance of that get contacts task. I'm calling the execute method. The execute method, because this is a asynchronous task, will call the do in background method. What about these objects that are arguments? That is simply a mechanism that you can use to pass parameters to this asynchronous task. In this particular case, we're, we're grabbing all the contacts, right? So there's really no parameters that we have, to, we, we have to use. It's not like we're grabbing a specific contact or anything like that. So therefore, we don't really need to pass any parameters. We just go and do this in background. So, this do in background happens, all right? We open our database connector object and we return database connector get all contacts. That gets passed to the on post execute method when this is done. This is also sometimes known as a callback method. In other words, when this is done, this gets called back. And what does it do? It takes this cursor, which we'll talk about cursor in a second, that this guy returns and it does something with it. What is a cursor? A cursor more or less is a list of data. All right, a list of data. And it's obtained through the results of a SQL statement. If I look at my database connector and look at get all contacts, we'll see that the get all contacts method on this returns a database query. The results of a database query is a cursor. In, uh, using these classes. And again, we looked at this a little bit before. The query indicates the table that we have, what fields we want to return from the table as a string array, and then other arguments. The other arguments being the WHERE clause, I believe, the um, group by, the having, any filtering we want to do, and finally the order by. So what this does is this gives me back a cursor. All right, cursor is a list of items. Now in our case, what do we do with that cursor? We simply set that to the adapter of our contact adapter. We set that to the cursor associated with the contact adapter. And effectively what that does is that will populate the list view with all the contacts. When does this get executed? This gets executed when this method finishes. All right. So the GUI isn't sitting around waiting. The main thread can handle anything that the user throws at it. This thread is running and it's doing the database access. And when it gets done, this on post execute method gets called.
We'll see that in all the things that we're going to do here for the database um, operations. If we look at view contact, we're going to see a similar thing. View contact is where we actually are pulling up someone to look at. We're not editing them yet, but we're In this one, in the view contact, we are calling our load contact task execute and we're passing it a parameter. Why is that? Why are we passing a parameter in this case but we were not passing a parameter in the other case? In the other case we were simply retrieving all contacts. Here we're retrieving a specific contact and that specific contact is associated with row ID. After we're done looking at this, we'll go back and see how it gets passed, but that's another story. All right. So the row ID is the specific contact that we want. So we execute this asynchronous task. What gets done in background? Well, our open, uh, we, we open our database connector. And then we do a query on the database connector to get one contact and we pass parameter zero. All right. If you remember, we have a whole list of things that we can pass. All right. Notice here we're indicating that we're going to be passing to this guy an array of longs. And we're going to get back a cursor. So here we're getting an array of longs and we're grabbing the first one and that corresponds to the row ID that we want. So what does a database connector object do to that? Forget one contact? Well it creates a query except The WHERE clause has WHERE ID equals the ID that gets passed to it. So that's the difference between the two queries. This query pulls up every contact. This query brings up only one contact as given by the ID that it gets passed. Notice that you don't have to write SQL statements here, which is kind of nice, all right? Uh, but you do have to know sort of the format that that goes into. Yeah, somewhere. Yep. The table, the columns, the selection the arguments for the selection, the group by, the having, and the order by. It's going to return back a cursor. Now, this is going to return a cursor as well, but in this case, there's only one element in the cursor. So notice, on post-execute, this is what happens when the background task is finished, the post-execute. We move to the first item in that list. Remember, a cursor is like a list of items that we can sort of scroll through. And what do we do? Well, we grab from that cursor name, phone, email, street, city, and so on. And we set the text Oh, this grabs a column index then we use the column index to grab the actual text and we set the text to the different text fields, text views that we have there. So that does a query. Again, the important thing to see here is that we're not doing the database operations as part of the main thread. 
we're creating a, another thread, another asynchronous task that we are invoking when we need to invoke it and we write the code that we want to do in the background as part of the do in background method and we write the code that we want to do after it finishes executing on the on post execute. So at this point we have our results, we can do what we want to with it. In the first case we, we uh, tied it to our list view, uh, the list views adapter. In this case we populate the different text boxes with it. In add edit, notice we have we have a choice of two my mistake we don't have a choice of two we have on the on click event of the button of the save we create another anonymous asynchronous task that says to save contact and on post execute, simply finish. And then we call the operation to actually save the contact task to the database. confused by something. I'm not seeing I'm not seeing this class, the save contact task. Unless I am missing something. There's a method to save contact. That's that's what I'm seeing. 
Right. Oh, here it is. I, I didn't notice that that anonymous task was called save contact task. All right, so that's, that's what it's calling. And it's going to do the do in background, call save content, or contact, and, and then it goes through the rest of it. Pardon me? Well... Here, effectively, we're defining that object between here and here. And after we've defined the object, we're calling a method on the object that we created. So it is of type async task, and it's called save contact task, and it's a new asynchronous object. And then everything between here and here is a definition of that object, and then we can call it. This is one of those cases where the terseness of the code, I don't know, I, I, I think it makes it more confusing. I don't really know what you gain by that, but it's good to see different examples uh, of this. Right, 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 right. Right, right, and, and that's sort of what it looks like. And of course, what happens when we do this, when we call that, is... We call save contact, and save contact creates my database connector, and it does a get intent get extras. This is one thing that we haven't looked at yet, and I'd like to look at it before the end of class. This is a way of passing stuff between intents. If you remember, each of the screens in this application is an intent. In other words, our home screen has a list of all our contacts as an intent. You click on that, you start the edit intent. You click on the edit button, you go into the add edit uh, activity. You need a way to pass data from each one of those, though. You need to know that I want to edit contact number one, for example. You can do that by passing through what are called extras when you invoke the activity, when you start the activity. And what this is doing is we're looking to see if this guy got past anything. And we're using that to determine whether it's an insert or an update. This intent will get called and it will get past an ID if we are editing. If we are adding, this, uh, this intent will get called, but it will not get past anything. So if we're not passing anything, then the assumption is that it's an insert. And we go and call the insert method. Otherwise, it's, the assumption is, is that it's an update. How do we pass stuff from intent to intent? Well, if we look at the address book activity, notice that For this one, we start the add new contact event. For this one, we grab the ID of the row first and put it in the extras of the view contact. Let me show you what I mean. We'll do this one example and the other ones work similarly. So if we're looking at this, the address book, we have our list of contacts here. Oops. 
we have our list of contacts. Carl and Hank. If I click one of them, I want to edit Hank. If I want to, if I click the second one, I want to edit Hank, and I want to, I'm going to want to pass the row or the ID of the person I clicked on. So if I click on Hank, I start the view contact activity, and I'm viewing Hank's information. Likewise, if I then go and say edit contact, I'm editing Hank and I'm editing Hank's information and not the other one. So these activities are somehow talking to each other. Let's look at the mechanism that does that. We're viewing the address book. So we're in the address book activity. We have on our list item an on item click method. And what it does is it creates a new intent. If we've clicked on a person, if we've clicked on a content, then we have the intent to view their information. So we create that new intent, the view contact intent, which we've defined in this file. And we specify what that intent is, that this intent is going to make a call to another intent. But then we put the extras file. What is the extras file? Or not extras file, but extras arguments, I guess you could call it. It's a way of creating an activity and passing it some information. So any of the information that we want to pass, we pass via the extras. So we put extras, the row ID, and argument 3, Argument 3 corresponds to the row of the guy that got clicked in the list. And we start that activity. We start the view contact activity. The first thing it does is, or one of the first things it does, is it looks on the extras that came with the intent and says, hey, were we passed a row ID? If we were, then it sets the row ID for that, and then it knows to do the query based on that row ID. So that is used to pass data between two activities. Question? We're, we'll, we'll, do it, we'll do it in pieces at a time. All right, so for example, the first piece after you define it might be simply to do a query. All right? Yeah, it's confusing. <laughs> the confusing part of this, th this assignment, or this, this application reviewing, um, the confusing parts of it, the new parts of it, are number one, the asynchronous tasks. That's a little confusing. All right? Second thing that's confusing is the fact that it's using multiple activities. And for the multiple activities to work, not only do they have to work, but they have to talk to each other. So they have to pass data back and forth between them. But think of something simple. Keep it simple on yourself. Just do some very basic database. Yeah, could be good. No, I think. I don't have any ideas. Oh. Oh, I'll study your research. I thought that you thought that you were doing this. She thought you were doing this. No, that is a good idea. I mean, you can do five years. All right. <laughs> we will. Th this is kind of the overview. This is kind of the grand suite. This is the things that are going on. We have our database object. The, the three big things in this. I think I said two, I added a third one. There's the database object, the database connection object. There is the asynchronous tasks, which are needed if you're doing database operations. And then there's the multiple activities.
We looked at the database object last time. Again, it has sort of an initialization where it creates a table. And then it has the methods that do the queries and do the updates and so on. Questions about this? All right. Yeah, it, it, it'll take some time. I, I don't. Ex yeah, this is from the Dito book. So yeah, read through the chapter, read, look through the code, and yep. And and yeah, and take some time. We'll go through this. I mean, I, I definitely what case if I don't, you know, I, not like we went through it one time and okay, you guys are all set. We'll see you at the, you know, in December. Have a fully functional database application going. <laughs> exactly. All right, any questions? Okay. All right. Um, that's all the lecture I had for today. Um, Thursday is a work day. I know some of you aren't going to be here. Um, I'm going to take my stuff upstairs and I'll be back down if you have questions for a few minutes. I have about 10 minutes before I have to scoot. So, do you have questions now or? Okay. Well, let me let me take my stuff upstairs and I'll be down in a minute.